Today we are going to continue about the practical machining processes wherein uh, till now we have studied about pouring, shaping, planing, threading, knurling and tapping processes. Now we have already entered into the multi point cutting tool processes and uh, we see other processes in the multi point cutting tool machining processes in this particular class. Okay? So, what we are going to see in this particular class is about sawing, broaching and milling, drilling as well as reaming then followed by gear cutting and gear hopping. Just as a part it is gives you only the introduction because many of you know about sawing especially milling, drilling and all those things you know the mechanics and if at all you are interested in studying about the material removal mechanism, mechanical physics and all those things you can take the course that I, I was repeating and again repeating there is a mechanics of machining course. So, you can take that is the advanced version of this particular course and some of the senior faculties will teach from the different IITs. Okay? From IIT Gauhati also one of the professor is going to teach you the mechanics of machining where you can study about the what is the mechanisms, what is the physics about of it and how the mathematical relations and all those things. Okay? In this particular course I just introduce about the course, I just introduce about the process only. Now, we are moving to sawing process and the sawing just this is for the fun sake just I kept do not take in a another way. So, this is about the sawing normally you might have seen the cutting of trees and all those things in the other road sides and all places. So, the most important process in cutting of the trees and all those things is uh, sawing process. Okay? We see about the sawing process, the introduction to sawing process, sawing is used to cut the, the correct work pieces from the raw materials. So, that means that at, if at all I want to cut the required shapes from a large or the bulk material normally you can go for the sawing process. Chips are produced by the succession of small cutting that means that there is a series of cutting edges will come and cut the particular component or particular uh, bulk material. So, the chips are produced by each and every cutter individually. Okay? So, multi point cutting tool as you see from this particular process or from this particular process it is having a multi point cutting. Okay? So, it will involve by cutting with the multiple points that are there on the cutter. Okay? The small teeth which are nothing but the cutting edges produces chips progressively when passing through the work. That means, that it will whenever it passes through the work piece it will generate a particular chip. Okay. So, chips are transported by the space between teeth that is called gullet. I will come back to you in the example what is gullet and all those things. Gullet is nothing but the space between two successive teeth in a sawing process. So, it is economical because from the point of uh, in energy wastage and all those things it will take less energy even people will use for hand saw that is hack saw. So, that uh, you can remove the material there is no additional power requirement and all those things used to produce desired shapes and sizes. Various types of hacksaws will be there or uh, the sawing processes will be there one other thing is uh, hacksaw that you can see here and uh, the second is band bend saw. So, bend saw normally will be there will be a machine where you just uh, put the bend uh, this blade and circular saws also will be there. So, it looks like a thin slitting uh, milling cutter, but uh, there are saws to cut the in the wooden industry and small small soft material industry also this uh, saw blades are used. Okay. This is about the blades configuration, these are the three types of configurations. The equipment if you see there is a horizontal band saw will be there and there will be a vertical band saw. Apart from the hand based hack saw if at all you are going for the mechanical based or equipment based in that circumstances you will have two types of band saw where the previous slide you have seen the blade just you mount the blade on either you on vertical or horizontal band saw and you can use it. The features of the blade if you see normally it will be decided by so many features. Now, if you see the material and the tooth forms normally blade thickness 
should be as minimum as possible but from the strength point of view and all point of view you have to choose optimally and the tool spacing that is the how the teeth what is the size of the teeth what is the placement distance between teeth and teeth so that the gullet have sufficient space to occupy or uh, give the e for give the space to the chip and uh, tooth sets average and uh, normally length of the blade so if at all some people want to cut the very very big trees and don't cut the trees okay first of all let me tell that don't cut the trees that is a uh, from the human tail point of view but if at all it is to be cut so normally this uh, length of the blade plays a one of the major role because if you have a more length number of tips will be more and uh, how fast a two humans who are standing are uh, placed on other both sides of the cutter are pulling it in terms of mechan manual in terms of machine so it's always depend on the how speed you are cutting and all those things so the terminology because uh, some of the people may not be well aware of this uh, sawing terminology and all those things people may be aware about milling drilling and all those things whenever they come to the point of sawing process oh this many terminologies are there so you may feel like that so blade back body of the blade not including the tooth portion so if the cutter is like so except this portion the other portion is what your ba blade back okay thickness dimensions side to side that means if your blade thickness will be like this okay so whatever the thickness width normal dimensions of saw blade measured from the tip of the tooth to the back of the tip that means width is tip from the top tip to the back of the tip normally it will be called as a width and the set bending of the teeth right to the left allow the clearance of the tip this is called the set of the tooth kerf the amount of material removed by the cut uh, of the blade that means that if i have two things assume that this is a single entity if i am going to cut it so what is the width of my cut is nothing but the kerf of the cut tooth pitch from one point of the crest of the one teeth to the crest of the another teeth tpi that is nothing but tooth per inch so how many number of tooths are there per inch is nothing but the tooth per inch gullet as i was talking to you about the gullet it is a curved area where the chip will be accommodated during the machining process okay so tooth face the surface of the tooth on which the chip is formed that means that the cutting edge and the cutting point and tooth rake angle normally rake angle of the tooth face is measured with respect to the line perpendicular to the cutting direction now this is about the rake angle all these things you can see here so normally it will the tooth tip angle shear plane and all those things now i want to explain you about the shear plane rest all the things are common so if you see the shear plane angle important for obtaining a maximum cutting efficiency if at all i want to get a particular operator want to get the cutting efficiency in a good way normally you have to check what is the shear plane angle okay if the shear plane angle is too low if you see the case one that is the lower efficiency this is the shear plane angle this is normally the shear plane angle represent by phi here also if your shear plane angle is low normally what will happen if you see generally depth of penetration the lower the shear plane angle the thicker the chip becomes and the lower the cutting efficiency okay so the tip chip thickness will increase and your efficiency will go down that means that how you cannot pull if a manually some people are pulling it you cannot pull with uh, that because the thickness is too high so it will be very difficult so you have to choose optimally what is the shearing angle that is uh, so that uh, if you can increase the shearing angle up to optimum level so you can increase the efficiency so you can easily reciprocate it and improves the efficiency that is about the sawing process so shear plane angle effect and the feed effect and now we will see just a gullet this particular portion is a teeth and this particular portion is another teeth of particular sawing process so the this particular portion will accommodate this is the empty space where chip is accommodated 
okay this particular portion is nothing but the gullet okay so if you see the cutting fluids in the sawing process the sawing process normally don't use the cutting fluid whenever uh, you are operating for the wood F however whenever you want to chop it off from the very very big large size blanks to the small small work pieces and all those things in the metallic region normally you should go for suitable cutting oils okay so if uh, the temperature is high so you have to go for emulsions if the temperature is low you should uh, go for lubricating dominating cutting fluids okay now we move on to the broaching process so when the broaching process will be normally used now normally uh, whenever you want very very big holes of uh, different different shapes and all those things where you cannot uh, drill or you cannot do the other processes normally you can go for broaching operation it moves a multiple tooth cutting to linearly to work piece work in the direction of tool axis okay this is the broach normally and this is the axis of the broach and you will generate certain geometry that is conversely which is uh, projected on the tool you normally you just push it and you will get the uh, output the shape of the machine surface is determined by the contour of the cutting edges okay so whatever the shape normally if you see here the gear is there on the gear you want to make a some slot for that purpose the broaching is used so whatever the surface that you are going to get here is nothing but the contour decides the surface that you are going to so i want a keyway path here on the gear so the broaching operation which is having the contour converse to the required shape is used here so mission operation is complete in a single stroke that means that once if you pass on so whether horizontally or vertically it will complete the so teeth are gradually increasing in height so that uh, the final height will be decided by the last teeth of the broach okay so the broaching material removal mechanism normally the broach is like this so where you will have a pull type of broach this one and you will pull from this end by putting into a existing hole the prerequisite for the broaching operation is you should have a existing hole then only you can go for the broaching operation so now this is the pull end and this is the shank length up to this one where the root diameter is there then roughening teeth normally roughening teeth this red one will have gradually increasing dimensions of the teeth so the cutting action will be gradually increases as you can see here so the thick the height of the each cutting edge is gradually increasing if you see here if you see here there is a gradually increasing height is there okay that means whatever the chip that is taking out by the broach which is nothing but a tool which is used in the broaching operation gradually takes a thin thin chips from each and every teeth of the broach okay so next one is semi finishing teeth this yellow ones are uh, semi finishing teeth okay so this will gives us the semi finish that means that it it won't give me the final product then followed by the finishing teeth this is green one is nothing but your finishing teeth so finishing teeth will decide the final shape that i am going to get on this one normally roughening teeth semi finishing teeth and finishing teeth all will be of the same contour but the final dimensions will be decided by the finishing teeth okay you can see here uh, one of the examples how the broach this is the broach and this is the final work piece that is received or it is a final component so this contour geometry is generated on the the converse geometry is generated on the final product okay. this is about the material removal mechanism in the broaching operation broaching normally classified into internal broaching pull type broaching and ordinary and progressive type solid and sectional segmented type and profile 
sharp end and form relative type these are the varieties of the brooch and if you can see here normally uh, the different varieties these are the tools and these are the shapes that is achieved during so one is a spline four spline is there double keyway is there where normally in order to fix the gears system and hexagonal system is there square round contour square is there rectangle is there these are the varieties of the uh, contours that one can generate by using the broaching process if you see this is the uh, internal broaching normally whenever i want to uh, make certain shapes in the internal geometry of the workpiece normally you can go for the brooch previous slide also deals with internal broaching only here again you can see how the brooch you can utilize for the internal geometries of different different shapes and how the function of the internal geometries can be explained in this schematic diagram okay these are the examples how one can go about to fabricate the broaching operation okay these are the tools and these are the geometries so external broaching also is there so suppose somebody want to generate the external so normally you can go for some other process also but you can also look at the broaching operation this is the external broaching operation if at all i want to generate this type of contour so that this type of external broach is used for this particular application okay so type of broaching machines there are two varieties of broaching machines are there one is a vertical broaching machine another one is a horizontal broaching machine if at all you are moving your broach vertically to the workpiece that is perpendicular to the workpiece that is called vertical if you are putting along the axis here also it will be axis here also so they have their own applications they have their own from the point of energy utilization and all those things some places it is horizontal broaching is good some places vertical broaching is good so normally horizontal broaching can be used for big big work pieces so cutting fluid in the broaching since the broaching operation is very small velocity application where the broach gradually feed into the work piece in that circumstances what is the thing is it will go very very slowly and the material removal will takes very very slowly so the dominating feature here is the friction not the temperature generation for that purpose you will always go for mineral oil based cutting fluid you need lubricating character you need lubrication type of characteristics rather than the cooling so that's why always are the most of the time people go for the mineral oil based pure cutting fluids without any water and all those things now we move on to the milling milling is a well known process and many of you who are listening to this one has a great knowledge about the milling process because it is one of the primary process that one can learn in the btech level so i am not going to touch much but however since as a part of the course just i will introduce about the milling process what are the varieties of milling and all those things milling is the most common form of machining to use any workshop this is the if you go to any type of workshop you will find the milling operation vertical milling horizontal milling universal milling and all this there are varieties of milling Yeah, operations are there so at the same time the applications of milling is too high that it is a minimum requirement for a workshop okay so lathe and milling these are the two processes which a small industry also will have in their workshop milling is a versatile process capable of producing simple two dimensional flat surfaces to the complex three dimensional surfaces okay this can develop from the simple two dimension to the complex three dimensions the milling process typically uses the multi point cutting tool cutting tools are called as the milling cutters basically and these are rotating cutters and capable of high mrr that is uh, material removal rate will be very high and the mass production applications is used so that means that if at all i want to generate very high amount of uh, production rate normally one can go for milling process you can see the milling cutters these are the milling cutters okay 
Okay. These are the milling cutters that are used in various varieties of milling operation. The principles of milling, milling operation on the rotary motion, okay. rotary motion will be given to the cutter and the uh, work piece material will be given some uh, feed motion or table feed will be given and there are different different varieties you can even give in the end milling operation or a horizontal milling operation you can even give the motion to the cutter also. The milling cutter is spun about its own axis uh, while the work piece is advanced through in such a way that the blades and cutter are able to shave the material that means that it can cut the work piece material. Axis is perpendicular to the feeding and the machine surface is formed one or more pass. That means that if at all I want this very huge amount of material to be removed in that circumstances I have to go for multi passes. If at all I want to remove very less amount of material you can use in a single, but make sure that you save the cutter. Okay? So, otherwise the cutters are assume that if you are going for a very thin thin cutters are there. People nowadays talk about micro milling cutters where the RPM goes more than 10,000 to 15,000 RPM, even some of the cutters go around 30,000 RPM. So, and the thickness of cutters is very small. So, you should be very careful whenever the people who are taking up the milling. So, there is a micro milling, high speed micro milling is one of the good areas to take up if at all you are a masters or a PhD student and you can work with the different different types of cutting fluids that I have specified on advanced materials, but make sure that your tool also will be a one of the advanced material. Okay. So, geometry of the cutter normally it is a multi point cutting tool where if you see the single point cutting tool type of tool bits are embedded on it. Okay. So, concavity angle will be there, angle rake angle will be there and the radial rake angle will be there. There are different different angles are there. These are all given on the textbooks. Some of the basic textbooks also will be there. As I said there it is a relief angle is there. Relief angle also called as a clearance angle or it is also called as flank angle. Radiance, radial clearance angle and the radial relief angle. Okay. These are the different different angles are there in the milling cutter. Conventional milling, there are two varieties of milling that is called up milling and down milling. So, many of uh, you come across this as a basic. The conventional is the up milling process, the most common fed method. There, uh, if it all you see the cutter direction and the workpiece motion are opposite in direction. If you take at that particular tangent at that particular point, so if you are work piece fed against the rotational motion of your cutter normally at that particular contact point both motions are in opposite direction that is called up milling. In the down milling if you see it is in the same direction. Okay. Maximum chip thickness at the end of the cut you will get. Okay. So, minimum to maximum is the one thing and this is a good about this particular material. Normally there is a down milling operation also where you can see that uh, the cutter moves in the same direction of the workpiece moves. The maximum chip thickness at the beginning of the cut to the minimum thickness. So, this is one of the disadvantage from the point of machining because anybody whenever you want to go and play a certain game you need a warm up. So, gradually you have to increase the temperature then only you have to play the game. You cannot directly go and play the weight lifting or uh, basketball or something you need to go for warm up then raise the temperature of the body then get the flexibility of the body then you play the game. So, from the point of uh, the up milling it is good because gradually thick thickness will vary from minimum to maximum that is warm up for the cutter. Uh, I am just correlating not exactly I am just, just I mean to say is that you start with the minimum and go to the maximum that will be always better rather than going from the maximum and me going to the minimum. It is not like first to play the weight lifting then go for just warming up that is not good. Okay. So, up milling from the particular point of view is good. So, suited for machining of the thin and hard to hold parts and uh, 
Normally, the advantage of this particular process is you may not require a very good fixturing. That is the biggest advantage of the down milling process because if even though the fixture is not properly held, what will happen? Since it is cutting downwards, there is no problem of lifting of the workpiece. One of the biggest advantage. At the other advantage, if you see. The other advantage what you can see is easy chip disposal because the chip is coming like this. Okay. So, the chip is coming like this means because there is no upper side on this one because your workpiece feeding is in this direction. So, upper side is here. So, lower side is this one. So, there is no problem of chip disposal and all those things and reduces the work hardening and preferred for the heat treated alloys and stainless steel. This is it's a variety, one of the varieties of the workpiece material. This is about the up milling and down milling. Many books will give you many differences just to go through it, but only biggest advantage of the down milling is you need not go for a very, very sophisticated fixturing for holding the workpiece. But for the machining point of view, one should always try to prefer the up milling because it goes minimum to maximum. There are two varieties of milling processes are there horizontal vertical milling machines means your arbor axis this is the arbor axis will be parallel to your workpiece in the other case it is perpendicular to your the arbor axis arbor is nothing but where you mount the cutter. Okay. Normally cutter is a independent body compared to the machine there is a difference between machine tool and a cutting tool. So, machine tool is nothing but complete machine itself is a machine tool and the cutter only is a cutting tool. So, cutting tool is a subset of machine tool okay. if at all you have already placed the cutting tool on the machine. Okay. So, that is why whenever the definition comes vertical and horizontal careful about writing arbor axis rather than the cutting tool axis also. So, people may understand that you have a knowledge, but uh, the terminology that you use whenever the examination is there or the whenever you go for the interviews normally because cutter is a independent body normally in a milling process. So, you talk about the arbor, arbor is a one of the integral part of the milling machine that is why normally arbor axis is deciding factor for horizontal or vertical milling machines. So, there is another one machine that is called universal milling machine. This is normally horizontal type milling machine only, but this machine can produce spar, spinal, bevel gears and twist drills and trimmers and the table has four types of movements basically. So, that is why it is called as a universal milling machine fed at an angle of the milling cutter used for helical milling and all those things. Okay. This not only this will have multiple types of movements that is why it is called as universal milling machine when it is invented. The MRR normally the mechanics I am not going to teach, but however just to give you what is the material removal rate in the milling process because why I am giving is some people may be appearing for the gate examination or some of the interviews. So, uh, milling is one of the common process people may ask you that is what is the MRR is nothing but WD FM where D is the depth of cut and W is the width of cut and FM is the feed per the minute. So, you can if you get the three values now you can solve MRR because why I am telling you MRR only is this is a machining process where you talk about material removal rate. It is not a finishing process like abrasive processes or super finishing process where you worry about the final roughness. Okay. That is why always machining process means you talk about the material removal rate per unit time and if it is a finishing process you talk about the final finish that you got per unit time or some other factors. Classification of milling you can say that is a peripheral milling and one is the face milling. Generally in the peripheral milling the plane is parallel to the cutter axis at the same time cross sectional milled surface corresponding to the contour of the cutter normal. So, the cross section of the milled surface correspond that means that in one go you can cut it in the 
face milling operation it is a vertical milling operation because your axis is perpendicular at the same time mill surface is flat has no relationship with the contour of the cutter okay so in the peripheral milling you have effect on the contour here there is no effect on the contour combined cutting action of the side and face of the milling cutter will be used both uh, things will be used while you cut the workpiece in the face milling operation so type of milling operations there are variety of uh, milling operations you may come across the first one is slab milling or the plain milling where you have seen in the previous slide also so another one is a side milling assume that i want to cut a particular portion of my workpiece that is on a particular side that is called side milling operation then comes the straddle milling that is instead of cutting one side if at all i am going for cutting a two steps on the two sides of this one it is called the, the straddle milling and if at all i want to make a slot on a workpiece now normally the slot cutting milling machines the cutter will be very very thin this type of slots you can cut for the keyways and all those things if you see the form milling form is the different different types of forms you can generate so that is depend on the contour that you are going to fabricate on your cutter will decide what is type of the contour that you want on the final product the face milling face milling is like a where it is a vertical milling type because your axis is perpendicular so whatever the thing that you want to do like a facing operation in a lathe you can do here also in a face milling operation you can see the end milling in it is also similar to the face milling operation but uh, if the cutter is smaller than your workpiece you can make the pockets of your own dimensions that is nothing but your cutter dimensions and in that way it will be so the pocket milling end milling is the same process you can extend it to the pocket so you can uh, generate the pocket on the but only by giving the cnc control okay you can generate the cnc control so that the end milling cutter itself can make the pocket milling and the one is profile milling end milling has this capability that uh, if at all you have any profile to be machined you can also machine this type of profiles uh, any type of contour profiles or some profiles you can cut this is about the profile milling there is another one is gang milling gang milling is nothing but how in a single go all the cutters will take part as a gang okay you know much better than me about what is a gang and all those things children you will have your own friend circle i am not saying that gang in a negative sense but i am positive sense you have your a friend circle where you just go for eating breakfast or lunch in the hostel and all those things so everybody will take part in the milling process that is about the gang milling these are the varieties of uh, milling process and at last we will have a surface contour normally here it also look like a end milling process but we will have a ball type of nose that is a spherical type of nose will be there that will help in cutting the contours okay if at all i want to generate certain contours i can generate the beautiful contours and uh, like uh, assume that i want somebody want to generate the knee implant or uh, hip implants for the biomedical applications you need a contour type of milling operations these are the varieties or the types of milling operations that one can do so it has a variety of applications in the industry that's why every small small workshop also always will have this type of milling operations if they have a milling machine of horizontal and vertical milling machine they can do a n number of jobs for their customers so cutting fluids in the milling operation normally milling operation will be done at very high speed so obviously the temperature will be goes high that's why you go always with the emulsion type of cutting fluids 
at the same time you sometimes if your speed is low and uh, if at all you want to go for lubrication purpose then you can go for normal mineral oil at the same time if at all I want to go for very very high speed so you can go for high amount of water in the cutting fluid applications ok. That is about the milling operation and their corresponding cutting fluids that one can use in the milling operation. Now we move on to the drilling operation. So, drilling operation is the primary operation normally one want to generate any type of hole ok. If somebody want to do the threading operation you need a hole. If at all somebody want to do the broaching operation you need a hole. If at all somebody want to do the reaming operation you need a hole ok. Reaming operation I will come after this particular process. So, the initial process to develop the hole is nothing but the drilling operation. So, drilling operation was the primarily designed to originate a hole that means that start it is a starting step to make any type of internal features ok. It is a low cost and it is a fast process. The hole is generated by the rotating edge of the cutting tool that is called a drill bit. So, the cutting motion is provided by the rotating drill and the feeding is done by linear motion to the drill or axial direction. So, normally what is I want to say is the feed motion is given at the same time there will be a rotary motion also will be there and the work piece is completely stationary. In, in this way the drilling operation will take. The rotating edge of the drill exerts large force on the work piece and the hole is generated. It will the edge which is there here will exert lot of force on the work piece and exerts the lot of forces and generates the hole. So, the material removal normally will be done by the shearing and extrusion because it is the material removal in the drilling operation is done by the shearing operation as well as extrusion operation because extrusion means I am just pushing it into the work piece at the same time it is shearing means it is rotating uh, in the stationary work piece. So, the material removal mechanism will be extrusion followed by the shearing operation. Types of drills if you see portable drilling machines is there, sensitive drilling machines are there, gang drilling is there that means that as just now I was telling about some gang. So, where you can have multiple operations can be done in a single go that is an upright drilling with a round thick column is there at the same time you have a rectangular box column also will be there. These are the varieties of the drilling machines are available in the market. So, radial drilling machine and multiple spindle drilling machines and deep hole this is the one of the varieties most of the people may not have seen this is called a deep hole drilling machine. So, whenever if at all some people want to do the drilling operation normally through drilling if at all somebody want to do basically you may choose the very very small work pieces because if the drill bit fails or the brokes uh, then it will be a problem neither the work piece is useful for us or at the same time tool also is a big loss that is why there is specialized tools if at all somebody want to do the deep hole drilling. So, deep hole drilling normally used for those applications where you want to go for the broaching in the next go. If at all some big work pieces are there from one side drilling will be done 50 percent and rotate the work piece and just do the on the other side also ok. Then you go for the boring operation also you can go because you can enlarge the existing hole then you can go for the broaching operation. So, drill bits normally drill bits have a variety of geometry. The geometry is uh, chisel point drill normally taper shank will be there. This is called uh, Morse taper normally you might have seen uh, and you might know what is Morse taper and all those things. Just you push it into the, the fixture where it has to be held just you it will have its own fixing because of the taper that is provided that is called uh, Moose, Moose taper and this is called the shank length. Let me talk about this particular uh, tool normally this is shank length where uh, this is no role in the machining process. The machining process will be done by the 
complete body of the drill bit where the flutes are normally provided. If you see this particular image where the flutes are even flutes, this is the one flute, another flute is this one. So, always the drill bits will have even flutes because to evacuate chips from the both sides so that the there would not be any vibrations are and all those things. Okay. So, regarding the three dimensional views, you will come in this one. So, you can see the three views of the drill bit, uh, where you, if you take any particular side, if you come, it is very easy to draw. So, if at all somebody want to practice, you can practice with writing a J here and another one J here, then you just add, okay. then you take up the other sides and you can take the lens of the other side and you can draw easily. Okay. So, this is how you can draw and if you see this is the land, basically land is the cutting edge which is provided so that the complete drill bit will not touch with the work piece. Otherwise, the friction of the cutting will goes enormously high. That is why normally land will be provided. This point will be there. You can see in this one, this is called the point. So, this point always is the initial step to make a hole. That is I told you know, this is called extrusion followed by the shearing. So, the extrusion part will be done by this point. So, lip angle will play a major role. So, lip angle as minimum as possible. If you have lip angle like this, it will have more extrusion into the workpiece will be better. Okay. That is about the lip angle and the normal relief angles also will be provided here. Chisel edge angle also will be provided and the corners and these are the some of the terminologies that uh, one can use in the drilling process. So, the mechanism if at all I want to perform properly the extrusion followed by the shearing, you should always choose your proper dimensions of the geometries here. The drill bit terminologies as I explained in the previous slide, this is about the various terminologies, what is the function of the land, what is the function of the heel, what is the web bar core thickness. This core thickness is the one that will try to extrude the initial step. Okay. So, the flutes are also pro provided if you see the flutes and the flutes are provided to evacuate the chip and at the same time drill if you see the cutting fluid has to go into the machining region for that purpose also the flutes will help. These are the other terminologies where the point, what is the point, what is the lip length, what is the lip angle and all those things and what is the point, how the point angle will vary. If at all I want the extrusion or if I, wa I want more about the shearing, then you have to play with the, this type of terminologies. There are two types of holes, one is a blind hole, another one is a, a through hole. Through hole means I will across the workpiece cross section the hole will be made. Here if it is a blind hole means you do not go to the other side of the workpiece that means that you will end here itself. So, that means you from other side if you see here it looks blind that is nothing is there like that you will observe. Okay. So, that is the difference between a through hole as well as a blind hole. So, drill drills and drilling operations there are varieties of drilling operations are there. So, the first one is a drilling normal drilling, the second one is core drilling where you can generate this extending type of hole you can generate. The other one is a step drilling where you can generate this type of geometry where you will have a extension at the step different steps will be there. The counter boring the geometry that normally you will you are going to get is uh, a step type of geometry you will get and the counter sinking. So, in normally the laptop or some other uh, places to uh, safeguard from the accidents and the, of the scratches and all those things, the screws are uh, held in the 
counter sinking regions and counter boring regions. The counter sinking you will have a taper one and you will have a this type of hole. So, reaming, reaming we are going to study normally reamings are used to enlarge the existing hole and to finish the existing hole. Central drilling, central drilling is a process normally one can see in the lathe operation to hold the work piece between the center. So, on the other side of the machine that is near the tail stock to put the dead center normally central drilling will be done and the gun drilling normally gun drilling will have a cooling applications the continue normally whenever some people want to make very very large holes or I mean to say lengthy holes. So, you need to send the cutting fluid very frequently that is about the gun drilling process. These are the varieties of drilling operations are there. Okay. So, we move on to the drill materials the where are the materials that are used here is the carbon steels, a high speed cutting tools, solid carbides coated steels and uh, ceramic inserts also will be used for the drill bit materials I am just talking about. Fluids if you see the application of the fluids you will have a cooling lubrication that is the other main important in the drilling operation is chip evacuation. Cutting fluid has to go through the flute, these are the flutes it has to go through the flute and it will help the chip to uh, evacuate from the location. At the same time some people also uses the sprays. So, the there are uh, apart from the cutting fluids you can also use the sprays so that uh, sticking nature will be minimum okay? or you can use both the fluids. Move on to the reaming process. Thus, the reaming process is a process where uh, to enlarge the existing hole and to clean the burrs that means that it will also helps in the finishing of the hole. So, that means that if at all I want to finish a hole by enlarging it normally one person can go for the reaming process. So, you can generate a good surface on the product also. If at all I want a M10 hole, I am saying that 10 mm hole or normally people go for 9.8 drill and then 10 mm reaming you can go and you can generate the finished hole. Okay. I mean to say not nano finished, you can get a good amount of surface finish because you have a multiple teeth here rather than uh, two cutting edges in the drilling process. Here you can see there are multiple cutters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 cutters are there in the drilling operation you will have 2. So, number of the cutters are more than obviously the load distribution will be proper and finishing of the hole as well as enlarging will be easy. These are the different types of reamers, reamer is nothing but the tool that will be used in a reaming process that is called the hand reamer will be there the machine reamer, choking reamer, fluting reamer, expanding reamer, adjustable reamer and the shell reamers. These are the reamers that are used in various applications of the reaming process. So, this is about the reaming process. Move on to the gear cutting process and gear hobbing process. Gear hobbing process is a process of gear cutting only. Okay. So, that is why these two are there. At the same time gear can be cut by milling operation also. You since people have already seen at the early stages of this particular lecture of you can use the milling process appropriately for cutting your teeth. You can use normal mill, milling process, you can use the form milling process to generate. However, we can see uh, the gear cutting here also. The gears are used to transmit the power or motion basically both uh, one shaft to another shaft. The gear cutting is any machining process for creating gears. That means, that any process if you use which is a subtractive process normally you can call it as a gear cutting process. The common gear cutting processes are nothing but hobbing that is called gear hobbing, broaching also one can use and mostly important process that one can use is a milling process and for getting good surface finish one can go for grinding also. So, general applications normally these are the applications one can use the which are machineries for mining, processing, 
robots and toys mostly nowadays are using you can see many motions is required for a robot to move hand or fingers motion if at all somebody want to control using mechanical means you have to go for gears at the same time electronic means also will be there you can control especially gear boxes and uh, speeds varying people many of you might have driven your bikes and cars and these are all run mostly on the gear systems. So, there are uh, varieties of gears that is external gears and internal gears. If you see the according to the axis of transmission, these are the varieties are there, but we are not into the gears, just we see about how the gears cutting will be done or the gears manufacturing will be done. So, gear cutting methods, gear cutting is highly complex that is because uh, the tool are fabricated converse of the shape. So, that you can generate uh, the required shape. So, one is the forming profile teeth obtained in the replica of the cutter normally and another one is generation complicated tooth profile provided much simpler form of the cutting tool that is called uh, hobbing and shaping process. So, gear forming process if you can see here how one can cut here at the same time gear generation that is also is possible. The shaping, planing and slotting. So, if you can also use the planing operation gear cutting by the slotting operation also is possible at the same time gear cutting by the shaping process also you can use it. The most important thing are the versatile process to generate the gear teeth on a blank is by milling process. Normally, gear teeth can be produced by a disc using a end milling type or horizontal milling or vertical milling depend on your application. You can go the production of teeth in the form milling characterized by the use of HSS milling cutters, ordinary milling machines and all those things. So, what I want to say here because many of you already know about the milling process. So, if you are uh, module is known, gear blank size is known, you can calculate the number of teeth that standard equations are there, universal indexing method is there, many methods are there. Uh, you can do this and you might have already done in your laboratory courses for gear cutting. Uh, even though if you are from a small small colleges also these milling machines will be there and uh, gear cutting will be one of the simple processes that uh, normally people will teach okay. gear milling which is a slow process basically and uh, normally the disadvantage is one teeth by another teeth it will cut. The large batch size is not suitable because if at all I want to cut 500 gears per day normally this is not a right choice. So, another one is milling operation is recommended for small and batch size assume that I want to generate 5 or 6 per day you can go for the gear cutting operation using milling operation. If at all I want to generate in a great number that is mass production normally one can go for the gear shaping, planing or hopping process. These are the three processes one can go. What is a gear shaping is? So, pinion cutter will be there. So, there will be a pinion cutter just you use pinion shaped cutter is used which mounted on the axis vertically reciprocated up and down so that you can generate the teeth. The second one is a great planing. So, here also you will have a reciprocating motion planing will be there and you just reciprocate parallelly normally and you will get the teeth on the blank that is mounted so that you will get the gear teeth. The most important is gear hobbing which is a commonly used process whenever somebody want to generate. These are the varieties of things that will be used. Less accuracy and finish is there. At the same time you can see here how the gear hobbing takes place, how the cutter is cutting in a single go. So, the process characteristics it is a gear generating process which use the hop cutter. Cutters and blank rotate timely in, in a synchronization relationship maintains the proportional feed rate between gear blank and the job and cut several teeth progressive basis for high production runs. That means, that you can go for 
high production rates. So advantages are like this, just there are many many advantages just to go through this slide. At the same time there are some of the disadvantages also there for the this particular hobbing process and so applications you have a tremendous applications of gear hobbing as I said milling is one of the common process. If the milling itself is a common process, milling is a main cutting process for the gears. So the applications of uh, gear cutting as well as gear hobbing will be tremendous. Okay? So these are the applications produced by the gear hobbing are used in various industries like machine tool industry to automobile industry. Nowadays people are using in medical industry also and uh, the, it determines what are the number of teeth that you want to produce and all those things. Coming to the cutting fluids in gear cutting and hobbing, basically gear cutting process will be at temperature, high temperature process because your milling cutter will rotate at very high speeds. For that purpose, you always go for emulsions type of cutting fluid. If at all gear hobbing process, the gear hopping process is a reciprocating process or a slowly cutting process. That is why you will go for mineral oil based cutting fluids. So, there is a variety if, if the cutting temperatures are very high because of the cutter rotation is very fast in that circumstances you can go for emulsions. If at all people want to go for slow and for the hobbing purpose normally you can go. So, you can differentiate from this slide itself the mineral oil looks like a golden color as well as emulsions look like a milky color. Okay? This is about the today's class and we will see the summary what we have we have studied in this particular class. We have studied about the sawing process, broaching process, milling process, drilling process, reaming, gear cutting and gear hobbing process we have seen in this particular class. And now we all move on in the next class to the abrasive processes. One of the most ab and well known abrasive process is grinding. So, we deal mostly about the grinding then we followed by the some of the grinding process like lapping, honing and some other processes and we also see what about the grinding fluids and all those things as this particular course is about machining and machining fluids. Thank you for this particular class.